Do you read the book of Isaiah, chapter two, verse one to four? The first section about the future Jerusalem, and then the first five to the end, the、uh, day of the Lord. So let's look at the first section first. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos. So concerning Judah and Jerusalem, now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, "Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the." God of Jacob, He will teach us His ways, and we shall walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. So. In chapter two, Isaiah presented the vision again in front of the people about、uh, Judah and Jerusalem. He repeatedly spoke about it from different perspective and different ways. So, what was the vision about? Isaiah said that. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains, which means there will be an end time when the mountain of the Lord will be established on the top of the mountains, and、uh, the mountain that the Lord built is Mount Zion. If you've been to Jerusalem, you know,、uh, of course, Mount Zion is on a high point in Jerusalem. But if you put it in In perspective of whole world,、uh, this Mount Zion is、um, not significant at all. There are so many more mountains higher than Mount Zion. But it says here, in the end time, in the latter days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountain. It was, it will be lifted up above all the other. Mountains and hills. Well, of course, this is a literary ex- way of expression, meaning that the position of the mount of the Lord will be higher than the other mountains and hills. It's not about its exact、uh, literal height. It's not going to get higher literally in terms of the height, but about its position. It'll be. Lift it up high because God Yahweh is with it, and、uh, you know that a lot of Chinese like to build temples on the mountains. But in the end time, the latter days, you find that the Lord's mountain will be higher than the others, will be exalted above the others, and people shall come. And worship the Lord. This day will surely come, and many nations will come, and they will say something. They will say, "Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways, and he, we shall walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem." Which means there's going to be a great revival in the future. At the time of the prophet, Israel was oppressed by the nations because that in the there will be a time in the future when God will restore the glory of Israel, where the nations will come to the mountain of the Lord. Many nations will say, "Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord," which means the pilgrims from the nations will appear in Jerusalem. Actually, today we can see a shadow of this. Whenever we go to Israel, we see that Jerusalem was was uh is filled by different nations. The nations will be determined to also learn the word of God and walk in His paths. So many godly people will go to Jerusalem, to the mountain of the temple of the Lord, because out of sight shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. 
God will use His own word to establish this, to establish Jerusalem. God will never regret. And the word, the law in the original language is Torah. And Zion represents the Temple Mount. And so the word of the Lord will surely come from Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be a center of the nations. But that was hard to imagine for the Israelites back then. But now today, we can really see that Israel is the center of the world. There's only one country that I want. If if this country takes a tunnel, then it may lead to a third world war. So it's under the attention of the whole world. The small little country. In the end time, Jerusalem will become a center for the worship of Yahweh again. The nations will come because. Torah, the word of God will come out of Jerusalem. God will raise it up again to share the will of God, and God will judge between the nations and will build many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. So when the nations come to Jerusalem to learn about the word of God, then you see that the world will be changed. There will be peace, and、uh, so that's why Jerusalem is called a city of peace. When Jerusalem is lifted up, when the word of God is released, then there will be peace to the whole world. When the nations listen to the word of God, the true peace will come. When everybody lifts up God, then there will be no more war between the nations, and that's why the weapons will not be needed anymore. The swords will be turned into tools for farming, like plowshares and、uh, pruning hooks. So there will no longer be destructive weapons, but tools that. Provide for life. Why? Because the nations will come to worship God. Why were there weapons? Because the nations are fighting and competing with each other. But when they come to worship God, they will not fight anymore. And just like. The Israelites, when they entered into the Promised Land, they did not fight against each other. The land was divided by casting lot because they all honored God. And you know, on the news, you can read that children of some wealthy man can fight for inheritance. That will end up in a court case. Just imagine the tribe leaders of new crop. They're going to divide the land, and then、um, Tikva got Chinese, and then Baraka got、uh, Cheng Chao. Baraka can come and say, "How come I get、uh, Cheng Chao and Tikva get、uh, Central?" So you see, just the land division can cause many problems if. The leaders do not, if the people do not submit to God. So when the nations come to Zion to worship God, to build relationship with God, you see that、uh, everyone is submitting to God, and there will be no more war. And actually, He shall judge between the nations, and will build many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation; neither shall they learn war any more. This is actually、um, crafted on a war in the United Nations. There's a famous war about Isaiah in the United Nations.、Uh, the vision is that there will be no more wars between the nations. And this is、uh, actually a special picture. Israel has actually failed 
but God has never given up on Israel. When men have failed, God is going to save it. Just like in chapter one, God said, "Do not give me sacrifice anymore. This is not pleasing to me." Actually, God. Uh, actually, at the time of、uh, Isaiah, men have failed for at least two hundred years. Chapter one, verse twenty-one. It says, "How the faithful city has become a harlot! It was full of justice, righteousness locked in it, but now murderous." So there was a lot of injustice.、Uh, people they oppressed the orphans and the widows. There were a lot of bribery and oppression and injustice and faithfulness and belief. And like those selling wine. Who add water into the wine? So chapter one described the reality of Jerusalem at that time, and the city that was faithful before became a harlot already. But now here, I see a send another message. He saw a vision, pointing to the future, distant future, in the eyes of men. The city cannot be saved anymore, but God is going to save it, and God has never given up on Jerusalem. He wants to raise Jerusalem up again, to lift it up above the nations, above、uh, the mountains and the hills. All the people will come and worship God as pilgrims and listen and learn from the Word of God. Which means God will become the center of Jerusalem and again. Right now,、uh, the time of the prophet was not like that, but God is going to change that. Jerusalem will lift up God again, and that's worthy for us to meditate about today in our lives. Where is our God? Are we like the end time Jerusalem, that we will magnify, lift up God, and value His word? Listen to him carefully and live it out. If that's the case, then we can our life can be lifted up by God, no matter how deserted it is now, because God is the key. And now let's look at the second section, verse five to the end. O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled with eastern ways. They are soothsayers, like the Philistines. They are pleased with the children of foreigners. The land is also full of silver and gold, and there's no end to the treasures. The land is also full of horses, and there's no end to the chariots. The land is also full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own four fingers have made. People bow down; each man humbles himself. Therefore, do not forgive them. So the prophet saw that God's glory is going to come back, and the future glory will be. Uh, the later glory will be greater than the former one, and the nations will receive the Torah, the teachings, the word of God, the word of life. And so, given these, see, the prophet extended an invitation to the house of Jacob, and to ask them to leave the ways of darkness and enter into the light. Which means we turn back to God. Do not walk in darkness and anymore. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and the glory of His Majesty. The lofty looks of men shall be humbled. The haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And、uh, Israelites actually they. Uh, were involved in sorcery related to the stars at that time, astrology, and so they even made、uh, formed alliance with the foreigners, with the Philistines. They made a covenant with them, and they formed alliance and covenant with the foreigners because of the financial, economic benefits. And how did they make an alliance 
a covenant with the foreigners. They bow down to their idols. They worship their idols. And you know, if you worship the idols, you keep certain festivals, certain dates, and that will be easier to form relationships and have business together. But in God's hand, that is unforgivable, because they actually committed sin willingly. They just totally ignore God's word, and so we can see first ten to. The end.、Um, enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and the glory of His Majesty. The lofty looks of men shall be humbled. The haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low, upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, upon every high tower, and upon every fortified walls, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the beautiful sloops, the loftiness of men shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day, but the idols He shall utterly abolish. They shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth, from the terror of the Lord and the glory of His Majesty, when He arises to shake the earth mightily. In that day, a man will cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each for himself to worship to the moles and bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the cracks of the rocked rocks, from the terror of the Lord. And the glory of His Majesty, when He arises to shake the earth mightily, save for yourselves for such a man whose breath is in his nostrils. For of what account is he? So in this section, we see the face for the Lord of the Lord appears three times, and that refers to the time of judgment. And many people want to hide into the rocks. And the caves to hide away from the terror of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord, because man cannot face God's judgment. Man have to hide in the rock clefts, in the caves. And on that day, all the proud will be brought low, and cedars of Lebanon are very high. And strong, the cedars and the oaks there, and and so the picture is saying that、uh, God's judgment will come to the high and lifted up, and the high mountains、uh, symbolize the proud ones, and they are the strongholds that oppose God. So God's judgment will come. Every high tower and fortified wall, which man thinks is the source of security, God's judgment will come too. And the ships of Tarshish, and represents the、uh, economy. So, in terms of、uh, the mil, in terms of military or of economy, God will bring all this. Down, and the、uh, idols will be moved, moved completely. And Yahweh will rise up, will judge the earth at that time. And men try to hide in the holes of the rocks, but God will be lifted up high. And men will realize that things that they used to rely on cannot help them. And men want to hide away from God's judgment. But God, the prophet is reminding the Israelites, you should rely on God. Men cannot be relied on.
he only has a breath. If God takes it away, this man will die. So no matter how powerful this man is, he will become dead. So we should not rely on a man because man will leave one day, and his last breath is in the hand of God. So if we should rely on someone, we should rely on God, because man is nothing. And so the prophet was trying to wake up the Israelites. We need to return back to God. Today, Israel is in ruin. But the prophet says, if we just return to God, God will restore the glory of Jerusalem. The nations will come, and the world will have peace. And there will be a day of judgment. We need to prepare ourselves to face. God's judgment. Today we are in the latter days, the end time. God's steps are close. So have we prepared well to see God, to prepare for the great and awesome day of the Lord? Can we really stand in this day? If we still rely on the, the chariots and the horses and the idols and the gold and the silver, then when God comes, we cannot stand. But if we can return back to God. This great day of judgment, we can stand. Amen. Today, the Lord is reminding us to return back to Him. When there are so many shakings in life, we should return back to God. Is God sending warning to us again and again? We cannot rely on these things. When we used to lift up these things, we are far from God. And now, when these things are being shaken, it's a chance for us to repent and return to God. Like the ship of Tarshish, representing our finance, is our economy、um, and the money finance being shaken? Has they replaced God? Are we willing to return to God now? What used to be the high towers and the mountains, our education, our career, our health, but when these are being shaken, do we return back to God? I thank the Lord for using all these shakings to remind me again that I can be humbled again from pride. Bow down to you, so that I truly know, Lord Yahweh. I need to return back to you, because you are long a God. So let's pray now. Thank you, Lord, that you're giving us these shakings in life during COVID. You have shaken the world's economy. You've shaken the health of man. You show us that、uh, what we rely on is nothing. Only you, God. Lord, we ask that you give us a humble heart to know that we are nothing, so that pride can leave us. Lord, when we lift you up, may the church be the way out for the end time. So let's pray for the church right now in Hong Kong, that、uh, the church will humble down, will humble, and. Humility starts for us. If we don't humble ourselves, God cannot come, and the church will not be lifted up. So let's pray for the church now. Lord, may our humility attract us to your church, and the church shall become a way out for the world. Let our lives influence the nations. So that the nations will not war anymore, and the swords will become plowshares, and the spears into pruning hooks. The nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they learn war anymore. So, Lord, help us. Let this start from the house of Jacob, from us, the church. 
Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. May you continue to hear our prayer for Hong Kong. Isaiah chapter two, verse two. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and the all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, "Come and let us go up." To the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, He will teach us His ways, and we shall walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And so, Lord, thank you that we know that Jerusalem will be lifted up as soon as we learn the word of God. And we know we need to humble ourselves. Otherwise, like verse eleven, the lofty looks of men shall be humbled; the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low. So, brothers and sisters, let's make a decision. To follow the Lord, to receive His teaching again, to receive His word, and to do it, so that we can be restored and blessed by God. Let's pray for ourselves. Lord Jesus, may You help us. Give us a heart that fears and honors You, especially when the world is shaking. When the world is full of challenges, we should return to you more, and we should come to your mountain, to your temple, so that we can receive your word, your teaching, and help us to learn your word, your, so that we can keep your word, be strengthened, and then your true peace can come to this world. Lord, we thank you. We look upon you. Here, I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Lord. A morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you all, Amen.